Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagoras, and today I have a Scoia'tael Mystic Echo list for you. This is a harmony list, and our leader ability allows us to play a Scoia'tael special card from our graveyard. And we are typically going to be using that to replay the Waters of Broccolon. When we play this, we spawn two Dryad Fledglings into the row. And the Dryad Fledglings have this harmony tag. And what harmony does is whenever you play a... Scoia'tael unit on your side whose main category is different from everything else on the board. So if you only play the Dryads, we would only have Dryads on the board. So then if we play, say, an Elf, that would then trigger the Harmony. If we then play a Dwarf, that would also trigger the Harmony. Um, so these guys will boost by one every time you play a different tag. And we have a few other Harmony units in the deck. We have one just Dryad Fledgling on its own that we can play from hand. We have the Harmony Poison Package, which is two Dryad Rangers. You might be thinking, Jagras, that's a lot of Dryads. But they have Harmony Tags. So once we get all the Dryads on the board, we can then play other things. Um, these damage an enemy unit by one and give it Poison. And we also have the Weeping Willow, which is a Trent, which also allows us to Poison Unit and has a Harmony Tag. We have an Elf, the Half Elf Hunter, who has Harmony. And when you play it, spawns a three strength Elven Deadeye as well. Then we have the Trained Hawk. We got one of these. Uh, that is another Harmony tag. When we play this on the melee row, it damages an enemy unit by two. When we play it on the range row, move an enemy unit to the other row. So you can see between these units, we have quite a few Harmony tags uh, and also quite a few different categories to trigger them, uh, which you know makes sense. On top of that, if we want to make sure that we can find our Waters of Broccolon, we have Falve. She plays a nature card from our deck and Waters of Broccolon is a nature card. Another nature card we have here, Call of the Forest, allows us to play a Scoia'tael unit from our deck and boost it by one. And then the third nature card, because I do think it's worth running three so that you don't brick, is Nature's Rebuke. We can use this to damage an enemy unit by five, uh, and if we get the death low, we'll boost a random allied Trent by two. So our options for Trents, we have the Weeping Willow, which we saw earlier, but also the Great Oak. He is a Trent and damages an enemy unit by the number of cards to the left of the Oak, and then boosts off by the number of cards to the right. So you want to stack your rows and then use this as a finisher. We also have uh, Percival. This is our other Harmony unit. And he's actually Harmony 2, which means he'll boost by 2 for each trigger. And he is a Gnome. That's his tag. So again, pretty powerful. And what we can do with our Harmony tags also is because of our um, stratagem, we spawn and play a Scoia'tael Neophyte, which is an Elf. We can play a Harmony unit and then trigger the uh, Ansaid Saber to immediately boost the unit. So if we played, say, Percival and then triggered this on going first, we would then have a six-point Percival. In terms of the rest of the deck, uh, we have Barnabas. He boosts an allied Elf, Dwarf, and Dryad by two, which is a 12-point play if we can get all of those units out, which is quite likely. We have Figus, who is our defender. When we play him on the row, it means that the opponent cannot target other cards on the row, and he also spawns a two-strength Rowdy Dwarf to give you some more Dwarves. Um, then we have Etriel and Morlega. Etriel damages an enemy unit by three, if you have Merlega on the board, then you damage it by seven. Merlega damages an enemy unit by three. If you have Etriel on the board, you also damage adjacent units by three. So they have a nice little synergy to give you some extra power. Uh, we have the Hawker Smuggler. Play this on the melee row. This is a human tag. And every allied turn on turn end, we're going to boost a random unit in our hand by one. Then we have our Rehead Sapper, which we can use to purify an allied unit. If we control an elf, we can actually purify any unit. So we can also remove, say, a defender tag. Bomb Heaver's teched in here as removal for artifacts. It's really good against stratagems, and it's a nice little tech card. So if you think your opponent's running stratagems, then Bomb Heaver is pretty cool. We have a couple Mahakam Marauders. These uh, gain vitality for two turns, and if you have one already on the board, which triggers Bonded, then that one will gain vit val that vitality for four turns. A couple Dolblathana Bowmen. Um, these, you damage an enemy unit by one for each row that separates it from the unit, so typically you're going to be playing them on the back row. And then the Dwarven Skirmisher play them on the melee row. Dodge an enemy unit by three. If it survives, boost self by one. So that is the deck. Um, and if you enjoy this video, maybe hit that like button. But without further ado, I'm going to jump into a pro ladder game now. And I'll showcase this deck in action for you. Ha! Nothing like a dwarf to get you out of a tight spot. Okay, so we're going first, and we are against Second Wind. And that does sometimes mean Gedeneath, so if we had our Bomb Heaver, which we don't, we would probably hold on to it. Um, we have one Poison. Not ideal. We have Percival to push the round. We have Cole, we have Falve. 
Can we keep... I mean, you want to have lots of different tags, right, is the thing. But if I mulligan this and get another poison, I'm going to be sad. So maybe we mulligan the door for now. Waters. This hand is stacked, man. I'm going to mulligan the poison, I think. An elf. And we'll do that as well. Oh, and there's the poison, of course. Oh, of course, but we can always get another one with coal, right? So opening play is, I think, Percival. And then do we trigger the elves? If we trigger the elves, I think it's correct. Because if we don't trigger the elves, I think this can be removed with a gutting slash, right? And so we want to kind of protect Percival by playing around it. Oh, I really do wish I had Bomb Heaver, though. I just have a feeling it's going to be a Gedanese deck. It might not be. It's not always. But they are kind of a bit more popular at the moment. That's the only issue with like teching cards like that is sometimes you just don't draw them. And the thing is playing waters here would be awkward because we already have two tags on the board. So it might be a lippy deck. But why would you be running second wind if it was a lippy deck? Nah, it can't be a lippy deck. Jagras says no. So ideally we want to trigger the harmony. But then how is the best, what is the best way to do that? None of these plays are particularly exciting. If we play the figures, we're really committing to the round. But I feel like we almost have to commit to this round. In some ways, because of the state of the hand. And then as long as we have Waters and Oak for a short final round, we should be fine. We could play Falve, but we don't have a Trent on the board. Because ideally you want a Trent on the board when you do that. Play Hawk, but then we can't move anything. I think I'm just going to play Figus. It's a bit expensive. But... I just don't feel like any of the other cards I really want to play at this stage. I want to use Percival to win the round. And there's a stunning blow. Okay, that's fine. But this gives me a little bit of wiggle room, right? Do we think he has another stunning blow? He's going to deal 7 damage if he does. Which wouldn't straight kill Percival, would it? Right? He would do 2 armor. And he'd have 6 health. So yeah, he'd be fine. So I think we can use this opportunity to play the elf hunter. Get some elves on the board. And we're okay. Oof, come on. Opponent. Sort out your connection. Sort out your connection, mate. I'm not happy about this. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Play some cards. Uh, oh. Nope. Oh. Are, are we gonna are we gonna play Gwen? I hope we're gonna play Gwen. Maybe we're not gonna play Gwen. I'm getting roped. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Deciding. Avalak. Okay. That's still fine. Why does it always rain on me? Two random units. I mean... I guess we play... The There's still not a good poison target for the Trent is the issue. But if we play it front row, then it just means we're not going to poison anything. But then it could absorb one of the shots, right? So maybe we just play front row Trent. Because then it means I can play Foul Rebuke. Get another Harmony Trigger off the Dryad. Um, and boost the Trent by two if we get a Killing Blow on the Nature's Rebuke. Which I don't hate. There's a good Rebuke target. I off three heads oh, come on! If it had hit the if it had hit the armor, we would have been fine. Do we just oak here? I mean, we can move it to the other row, right? Let's just do that. I mean, one great sword's not really a huge problem. Although it would have been nice if we were able to remove it. Not quite in removal range. Unfortunately. Dagger. Oof, that's expensive. I mean, we can kill one of them with Oak. 
The alternative is we pass here. If we pass, he gets two points from the rain. I don't even hate spending the oak to push the round if he's spending dagger. Oh, I wish I if that had hit the if that had hit the shield again, we could have we could have rebuked. Can we just talk about this for a second? I'm not happy with this situation, you guys. I think I do think we just kill it. Right? I think I think like having control of the round is really important. And as long as we have options for the final round, it should be okay. Like we want to just bleed in the next round with one waters. Probably like spend quite a bit, but keep our leader ability. I'm okay with passing here as well. Because we're on 34 points, he's on 13. So we're up to 21. He gets two points from this. Maybe one. Still needs 20 odd points. Delirium, so play that on the back row. Okay. So... Do we commit foul? If we thin the deck, we get some harmony triggers. He's played Delirium. I don't hate it, honestly. If we kill the bear, it means he can play... If he has a second bear, he can play it. But you know what? He doesn't have a second bear, right? Right, kid doesn't have a second bear. Um, and I, I like that play. It gave us four points of harmony, six points on the card, and two. Like, it's a big, big boy play. There's the pass. Okay, so now we have to kind of commit to the bleed. I think we commit to a bleed. You just don't really want a long round against Skelliger. You know, they play things like Wild Boar and all that. We played Oak, so we don't need to row stack anymore. There's one poison. Yeah, one poison. Yeah. There's a dwarf. We want tags here. So we've got a decent number of tags. We could kick this, to be honest with you. Oh, and there's another dryad. And I think we just open with the smuggler, to be honest. We can pull Etrial or uh, Barnabas, should we wish to. Oh, yeah. So I think we just open with the smuggler. You could have played the waters in order to um, bait some removal, I guess. But I think it's fine. So now we'll play Waters. The only issue we have really is this Dryad Ranger is kind of awkward. I mean, we can call the other Dryad, right? We could always we could always double poison. That is an option. We don't really want the boosts on this either. Okay, so we're gonna skirm that, right? Back. Let's just kill that. End our turn. I mean, I don't know. We do have we do have access to Merlega. We have a ranger. We can poison something. We have coal. We don't have an elf on the board though. So he gets two points from the bleed. Is this the pass? I don't know about that. So we play this, we get five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. We get ten points. And another boost on the dryad. I don't need to row stack. We're also just playing around things like Wild Boar. If he plays Wild Boar, are we really upset though? Going down a card. Is this the poison target? So this could be the pass. We've got his defender out, but he hasn't really committed much. And we've played Merlega, and we're not drawing into very good cards. 
Unless we play like coal, more poison. Eh, I mean, this she's pretty stacked now. She's gotten plus three, right? She'll get another one here, plus four. I think this is probably the pass. Like, I think I think we we've made the round short enough that he's not going to get as good value out of some of the cards as he would like. Gremist. Huh. And then we can actually poison something on the next turn as well, which is pretty nice. And he shouldn't be able to to remove it. Plus, this is now a, a point triad ranger, right? Oof. That is that is I like it. I like it. There's the other poison. Don't want that. Do want that. So I really want to find different so we've got dryads. Elves. We could do it with a dwarf, to be honest, and then we can call Barnabas. There's a dwarf. I think this is probably the hand. So hopefully our opponent will play something that we can interact with. Because I want to play the Skirmisher, right? I want to spawn things and I want to boost my Dryads. Play an alchemy card from your deck. So he's probably going to go... God's yeah, resurrect a Greatsword? A boat, okay. So the problem is the boat would kill the Dwarf. So let's play Waters. Uh, then we'll play Etriel. Hit that. And then we can use the dwarf to kill this. I think that's correct. And this way we're also not stacking a row too much to play into his um, dagger and stuff. He's probably got decoction so he can kill one of my dryads. Does this include itself? It does include itself. That's really annoying. So we lose a little bit of value there on Barnabas because we no longer have an elf. We need a poison target, really. Are we going to get a poison target? I mean, he has to start playing some points soon, right? And if he has to start playing points soon, well, there we go, we've got a poison target. He's played his cleanse. So this is probably Dagger. Yep. So that he can play Decoction. Yep. But I doubt he has another Purify because he's played Gremist. Unless he has Sig. Do we play- the question is do we play our Gnome now? If we want to bait this to take longer. Because he might be able to Sig a Drift for this, right? In which case we should wait on the Poison. So let's play Cole. Let's play Barnabas. We lose a couple points on the thing, but I still think it's correct. Like, we lose a couple points on the Harmony, but I think it's fine. He's played his- unless he resurrects his Defender. But then he could have resurrected his Defender on the next turn anyway. Great sword. Okay, that's fine. So, let's do this. Look at this. <laughs> Thick Ranger. Oh man. That ranger is thick. Look at her. Whoops, that's Barnabas. Don't look at him. Look at this thick ranger. This is a weak wild boar. Like, not good. Let's just do that. And there we go. Look at that. And that was like a good bleed. We timed the bleed pretty okay. I think if we'd gone longer, you risk losing a card and then that can be... Um, difficult, but th the way it worked out was he couldn't do his last play dagger. He had to do it like early to try and get points And that's how we were able to win the round so pretty nice Anyway, let's jump into another game now and I'll showcase this deck in action once more for you We've hammered enough. Let's get to work So we're against Tactical Decision, and what that means is... I don't know why this isn't going away. Uh, it could be Hyper Pop. We're going to keep Bomb Heaver for sure, because of Masquerade Ball. We've got Elf. We've got one Poison, two Poisons. We've got two Mahakams. I don't think I need both the Mahakams. I would quite like a Dwarf, though. 
But I don't think like both of these is really helpful. There's another dwarf, so we'll mulligan those. Um, I don't actually hate this hand. Do we need a purify? Probably, if it's a lot of poison, that's quite useful. But let's just stick with the hand. Uh, so I think the opening play is probably just Percy and then click, I think. I think this is our opener. We really want to win this round. Um, having control against um, what was likely to be a Masquerade Bull deck is really nice. And we have the removal should we need it. So there's the first poison. So he's probably got more than that. Um, so we can just cleanse this. It may also you know, be worth calling... Um, it may actually Figus, to be honest with you. I don't really hate it. And we'll just see what our opponent does. It doesn't look like he has Masquerade Ball, because I think he would have opened with it if he had it. Which makes this round a lot easier for us. So we're going to lock it. Fair enough. That's fine. I don't know what my sneers would have you this so I think we just play the Half Elf now. Because we've got a lot of Elves on the board anyway, so let's just get some more Harmony Tags I going. Find. I'm quite happy with this. And then we can maybe play the Dryad, play the Willow. We need a Poison Target really for those. We've still got a Dwarf we can play as well. And if we play the heart, the dried just as a as a poison, that's fine too. The issue we have, to be honest, is just lack of, of targets. Um, but I don't mind playing it just as a harmony. I think that's fine. I mean, we could. Mm, no, I think this is just fine. It's not really a great target for the poison, but. We want to win this round. He doesn't have Masquerade Ball in hand. This is what this tells us, which means that we can be quite aggressive in round two because of Bomb Heaver. So we do really want to win this round because it gives us that space. Because if he had Masquerade Ball, he would have played Masquerade Ball. And he doesn't have Mata either. I guess it, but then would you play Mata? Because you usually want to play your Masquerade Ball and then you want to assear it back into the deck and then you want to draw it again with Mata. So... It's kind of hard to say. Kind of hard to say. I'm gonna lock it. I mean, if he's playing a bunch of aristocrats, but he's also just playing a bunch of bronze. But then we haven't really played anything other than bronze. Oh, he went bleeding. That's an interesting choice. So I think we're just gonna get the harmonies on the board. I'm pretty fine with it. And then we can play the Dwarven Skirmisher. And there's the pass. I mean, he got, what, a poison out of us, but I'm not overly concerned about that. So I think we really want to push this next round. We have access to um, Waters with Valve. We have Oak. We have Coal. We have Barnabas. We have, oof, top decks galore. We've got a Dwarf, so we don't need this. Hawk. We could really do with Figus. Because, oh, well, I mean, we've got Etrial. So we're going to pull either Etrial or Figus, right? With Coal. So if we pull Figus, we don't need the Skirm. And I do think we need Figus, really. Okay, so let's go with one Waters. We could always pull both with Mystic Echo, depending on how the round goes. But I do think we want to be quite aggressive this round. The one thing we need to be a little bit wary of... Um, is Masquerade Bull. Nah, so I think we just want to call Figus here, right? It means that we're not going double waters this round, but I think that's still fine. Let's do this. The only issue we do have here is um, with Cow Carcass, he can do things. Okay, so he needs to get, he needs to draw his... Um, he needs to draw his... Um, For young is the night. What am I trying to say? He needs to draw his uh, Masquerade Ball now. So that's interesting. So he should play it now, because he's realized I'm pushing him. So he plays the Masquerade Ball, he gets the Thirsty Dame. And so we just get rid of this straight off the bat. Just nah. Easiest bomb heaver of your life. So we have Dryads. We don't have Elves on the board. But I guess we could... 
call... If we play Morlega, right? Is he gonna purify it? I mean, I guess it makes sense. Why would you poison this when you can just purify it? That's such a weird decision. Mm, okay. So I think what we want to do... If we want to play Etrial and deal damage, which we do, deal seven to kill the dame, we should play Morlega now and deal three damage so that we can then call Etrial. It's quite committal, but I think we can win the round if we do it. So there's one poison. Thinking can be hazardous to your health. <laughs> we also don't have an elf on the board. So let's go call Etrion. And you kind of want to space things out a wee bit so that he can't easily cow cock as two things and cause trouble. Have you met my Kill the thirsty dame, just because there's going to be a lot of tags anyway. Um, oh, we have to play something else, don't we? Hmm. I mean, I guess this is another harmony tag before we play the Trent and the thing. So we just play this for damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, we'd have to play it for movement. We just play Barnabas, perhaps. I think you really like this one. Let's do that. Obviously not boosting the poison dryad because she's probably dead. And I'm pretty happy with the state of this. Like, he hasn't been able to play his Masquerade Ball, and we've really pushed him out of the round. We should be able to just kill Vigo with the Skirmisher. There's a Rot Tosser. And we can use this to block as well. The question is, do we want to protect the Fledgling? And I think we probably do. If this gets poisoned, it's probably fine. I don't want to sacrifice the Fledgling. So, let's do that. I've just realized I've stacked the row, though. But he's gonna have to poison something. Oh, wait, I haven't because of the cow carcass. I'm being so silly. I'm like, oh, I've stacked the row. It's like, no, you haven't. <laughs> so I guess we would play Oak next. Or we play Hawk. <sighs> Hawk Ranger is kind of mediocre. Okay, yeah, so we Oak and kill this. So we'll kill this one. So we count one, two, three, four, five. I mean, we can play this on the front row now. It's only worth five points, though. But I, I do think we're kind of all in at this stage. We are 36 points up. Okay, we can't play that on the row now. How rude. It's okay, he's going to poison something. Invo. Okay, on the... On the oak. Okay, so he thinks he's going to get out of the round, I guess. Well, maybe he will. He does have his leader. He can call oak with his leader, right? So that's not bad. I guess that's his plan. 7, 8, 9, 10. Puts him on 27. We're on 51. It's still quite a mountain to climb. It depends on the state of his hand, really. This was the only kind of poor card we had, but there wasn't really a sequencing where we could have played it earlier, I don't think. Okay, so that's... Okay, so he's playing Joachim into Oak. I suppose. Yeah. I mean, that's not exactly amazing, though. It's not awful. We probably should have killed Artorius, now that I think about it. Alzers into Lambert, which is worth eight. Because I've got no duplicate. So we should have killed Artorius, I suppose. Come on, you're running out of time. So what's our plan? Um, you need 10 points. <laughs> oh, easy 2-0. To be fair, he drew badly. He didn't have Masquerade Ball in the starting hand. So we didn't really have to deal with that strategy of double Masquerade Ball. And then we just bled it and bomb heavered it in round two. So we had a really strong hand in order to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that game turned out. So yeah, that is the Harmony Elves, Elves list? Harmony? Squirtel list that I used to get to Pro Ladder. Uh, it's a pretty fun list to play. It's got some interesting synergies and it's pretty neat. So if you like the video, maybe hit that like button. Let me know in the comments below uh, what kind of decks you want me to play in the future. You can always subscribe to the channel. You can find me on Twitter, at Jagoras, Instagram, at Jagoras, and 
Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Agoras. Thank you so much for having, having what? I don't even know, words are hard today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!